Hi, this is Versard. Nice to see everybody talking today about John Dewey. Um, most people know most people know about John Dewey. He was an educator in the 1800s and then 1900s, um, and he he lived such a long life. I mean, he was born in 18 I'm sorry, in 1859, and didn't die until 1952, when I was already alive. I was six months old when he passed. So, um, and he did so much work along the way. Um, so many of those scientists that you have seen in this series um, were all born and died at about the same time, but sooner than him. Um, so he really is something. And the last uh, article was talking about William James, uh, they became friends, um, you might remember, and James had written his huge book, uh, Principles of Psychology, uh, in 1890. And it's interesting because they became friends about that time, and although uh, James is 20 years older, I think, um, the, um, the, uh, he sent, James sent, a copy of the Principles of Psychology to Dewey and asked him to review it, which he did. And um, that was an interesting thing because he began, he, Dewey began to understand much more about how uh, James was, was uh, talking about how the brain works. Um, and of course, this was a long, long time ago. Uh, Dewey wrote from 1890 all the way to 1952. So that's um, 60 years he was writing, having come to understand how the brain works from James in 1890 or 1891, when he sent his uh, letter back to him, the, his fan letter back to James about that book. Um, and of course, in the book that James had written, uh, he talks about plasticity for the first time. So this is all an interesting thing about how uh, Dewey came to understand how the brain works. Um, an interesting um, se segue is that in my particular case, as a stroke person and aphasia person, um, I couldn't read, write, or speak well. And the um, uh, and that was in 2011. And we moved from Boston to Florida in um, 2012. And basically for the summer, starting in the summer, June 2012, and I still couldn't read. Although I knew what words were, I could see the individual words, you've seen this in other articles, um, but once you put them together into sentences, I couldn't read them. And I used, uh, I've, I've used this for a long time, I happened to have read this before my stroke, several times before my stroke, um, The Experience in Education by Dewey, he wrote this in 1938, and uh, that summer of, of 2012, um, uh, I started reading this. I figured I know I'm getting better because I could see uh, two words, sometimes three, then four. I wanted to be able to read full sentences, even though I couldn't read, um, but in the parking lot, and she would go in and get stuff and read. Um, and I go for hours just sitting in the parking lot reading this book over and over and over again, June, July, August. Um, and by the fall, I realized two things. Uh, one was that I now could read because um, I just kept doing it. And of course, we've talked about the internalization of cognitive activities. And that is how I was coming to understand it the way the brain works, the way habits work, the way the brain was building new um, brain matter, new dendrites and synapses, as you have all heard, new branches and leaves. Um, and the other thing that I came to understand was, and it was really more of a question, how was it that Dewey um, knew so much about the brain <clears throat> in, uh, and wrote about it in Experience in Education? Um, and I went looking in history, because I had nothing else to do, um, trying to figure out how it was that, that Dewey came to understand that. Because at that time, I had not read uh, the principles of psychology. I've read this, um, but I really didn't know how he 
Dewey came to understand that. So I went looking for articles, books that he had written and that other people with whom he had been in contact in the 1800s and 1900s. And of course, uh, little by little found various articles and books, uh, how they came to know each other uh, and eventually came to understand not only that they knew each other, that Dewey had actually reviewed the principles of psychology with um, chapter two being about habit and plasticity. Then as I read more of Dewey's books, I began to see the word plasticity appearing in his books, in Dewey's books. The only way, the only way that uh, Dewey would have been able to write about plasticity could only have come from uh, James and, and his first book, um, The Principles of Psychology. So that took me years to figure out how it was that Dewey was writing in this way. And here it is, 1938, when he wrote the Experience in Education book, um, that as he wrote it, that was 50, basically 50 years after he had read about it the first time with, with James. Um, so uh, then I started to, uh, to start writing about why it was that Dewey was uh, the beginning of becoming a neuroeducator. Um, again, because he understood as much as he knew, but well, one more tool he needed uh, without knowing that he needed it was finding out about plasticity and how the brain works. And as um, James says, and as now Dewey has said, the um, and then as he wrote about it in the Experience in Education, which is a really great little book that everybody should have. You'll see it in the, in the uh, article. Um, because for those people who want to be neuroeducators, they want to know more about how the brain works. There are a million different places you can go uh, from scientists, neurologists, um, sorry for misspelling that, mispronouncing that, um, uh, and other educators one another really really good book is to read uh, experience in education and then come back to my work and you begin to see what experience really means when we talk about it from a brain aware um, context because it really is the experience is this uh um, is plasticity in terms of inducing plasticity you know the experience dependent neuroplasticity um, um inducing plasticity, which converts thought and cognitive activities, reading, writing, speaking, and other things into new brain matter. So that is how, um, two things, that's how uh, Dewey came to understand this. And it's also how I learned how Dewey had become to understand how the brain works not being a scientist himself, other than an educational person. Um, and that was because he started reading about plasticity 50 years before um, uh, as a result of reading James', James book. Uh, book. Um, and goes on then to, to refer to, um, again, using James' language, uh, that the meaning of experience in its relation to education is what he is trying to do. Um, and I think I have one here. Yeah, as Dewey said, the, the philosophy of experience requires an, quote, in, intimate and necessary relation between the processes of actual experience and education. Um, as James had talked about it, um, although he used the word plasticity, today we, we refer to it as experience dependent neuroplasticity, because if if you don't have the experience dependent activities, there's no inducing. You can't induce plasticity. You can't induce new brain matter because the energy that's required to grow new, I'll say new learning, um, only comes from the experience dependent activities. So if you don't have one, you, you won't have the other. If you can't read, well, you can't read. If you can't write, you can't write. You have to go through that process of um, uh, doing the activities, going through that process of internalization of those activities into the brain, basically writing the, uh, the information you have with a new uh, neuro P 
pen um, such that every single thing we do on the outside, what we are doing here with this presentation, as I'm writing, as I'm even, you know, making symbols of it, everything we do is then written on the inside, believe it or not, with the neural representation of what you are doing. So the, uh, that is how the brain works. And of course, repetition is a large component of it as well. Um, the, um, as Dewey says here, and I'll quote this again, admit, admit all, and of course, all of this is, these are quotes off of experience and education. Um, amid all uncertainties, there is one permanent frame of reference, namely the organic connection between education and personal experience. Organic connection between education and personal experience. That is how Dewey started to rewrite his understanding of education to include the organic connection as James had talked about when it comes to habit and plasticity and converting these thoughts and cognitive activities into new brain matter. Plasticity is the foundation for all learning. Nothing happens without it. Everything happens with it going forward. Um, one more good quote from Dewey, and there's about 80, there's 91 pages in the book. There's about 81 great, more than that, quotes in that little book. Here's another one. At bottom, this principle rests upon the fact of habit. When habit is interpreted biologically, the basic characteristics of habit is that every experience enacted and undergo modifies the one who acts and undergoes. While this modification affects whether we wish it or not, the quality of subsequent experiences. It is for someone different person. It is somewhat a different, different person who enters into them. That is how the brain works. We learn by, by creating new matter. And as a result, we learn as a result of having more of that, of that uh, brain matter and learn more as a result. And the final quote, at least here in my article, is uh, written by Dewey, as he now understands it, as he understood it at that time, but he didn't necessarily understand it before he had read from and learned from James. The educational system must move one way or another, either backward to the intellectual and moral standards of a pre-scientific age, or forward to ever greater utilization of scientific method in the development of the possibilities of growing, expanding experience. We have to move forward into the scientific world and begin to understand that all of our people, starting with our kids, when we were all young, we learned about photosynthesis. That is how the planet runs. That's the energy that comes for the planet. If we didn't have the sun, we would be as, uh, as, uh, we would be uh, dark, nothing would work. The same thing happens with the brain, especially to understand the scientific age, um, that the, the uh, brain uh, converts the activities on the outside, the work on the outside into uh, a, a neural representation on the inside of what it is you learned yesterday last hour, last minute, last second, continues to build and rebuild that going forward so that tomorrow you understand more than you didn't know the day before that. And all of that has to do with how we learn. And to understand that means that in addition to starting at a young age to understand both plasticity as well as plasticity, photosynthesis, as well as plasticity. Both of those have to come together so that young people, everybody in the world would understand what and how plasticity learns, how we learn based on that. So we have to work hard on making sure that the educational community uh, starts using the lexicon that's required uh, for themselves and then with their students. And then this, the teachers 
already have all their teaching skills, but one of the things that are missing that of which they are unaware that it is missing, missing is plasticity and understanding how the brain works. And that is John Dewey for today. Have a good week. And I will see you again in a couple of weeks with the next uh, edition of the um, uh, scientific series. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.